this video, I'm going to show you why autonomous agents and business process automation are different. So let's first start with what is business process automation? Because business process automation is very different than autonomous agents. So with business process automation, we'll start with a traditional type of use case where we have some sort of event or trigger that triggers some sort of if condition. And let's say that that's true or false, that then decides to run a process and, or to skip a process. And then let's assume that beyond that, we have another if statement that says, well, if this result, then do this particular process. The thing about business process automation is that it's very focused on being able to follow a pattern that is established for it based upon conditions and if statements and basically business logic that you're going to build. This is very different than autonomous agents in the fact that this is not the case with autonomous agents. So let's look at that. So when we start talking about an autonomous agent, an autonomous agent works very different than business process automation and the fact that business process automation is scripted, where an autonomous agent is not a scripted experience. It is using an AI model to be able to decide how to move about the different tools that it has at its disposal. Let's take a look at that. So an autonomous agent doesn't follow these if then else statements. It actually can be triggered by different anonymous autonomous triggers. And it allows you to be able to take these long running processes and be able to take them and interact with them and be able to interface with all these different tools that it has at its disposal. Now, business process automations are commonly wrapped up as tools that an autonomous agent can use, which is why a lot of people get confused about this. But just be aware that it has all these tools at its disposal and it dynamically reasons over the capabilities that it has at its disposal and what the person is asking for or what the trigger has provided as information. And then based upon the way that the conversation or the way that that particular process is taking place, it could affect the way that it reasons and choose which tool it wants to use. So all of this is controlled by the humans who give it guardrails at the beginning though. So if we think about the spectrum of different agents and how this whole AI thing has started to evolve, originally we started with just simple retrieval agents, things that went out and just answered questions using data as a mechanism to be able to respond. And you hear this referred to as a RAG pattern or a, a search and summarization type of actions. And then we moved over to like task-based uh, scenarios or agents. And those had the ability to not only be able to retrieve information and answer questions, but they could also be able to service the person through the chat interface to go do something like book a vacation or book a flight. That was the task-based type. This autonomous area is where we're really allowing this AI to be able to take a set of tools, be triggered by something that is not necessarily a real human and be able to take that and be able to move about uh, using that to be able to complete a different business process or to do a job just like a human would do the job. So if you've watched a lot of the videos that I've had on my channel, you'll see that I've given you the idea of all these different tools that are available for you to be able to go build an agent yourself. And some of the key tools here that we're talking about are things like topics or knowledge or actions. All of these are different tools that this agent can go and do. And just like we used to do it where it was triggered by you talking to it back and forth, now we're gonna be able to do this same kind of concept with these same set of tools and we can use these things in a non-synchronous uh, way where we can do it autonomously behind the scenes based upon a certain event or trigger that happens that fires these things to go do this. And we can combine all of these things to be able to produce a result that allows the AI to do something that isn't necessarily programmed, but allows it to be able to use the tools and the guardrails that we have provided for it.
So there's a couple of key concepts for you to be able to really be able to understand autonomous agents or just agentic experiences in general. The first one is going to be a trigger. Now, triggers are this new concept inside of Copilot Studio that allow you to say when to initiate the agent. Most of the time, these triggers for you to talk about autonomous agents, they need to be non-spoken and they need to be event-driven. So something happens in some sort of system somewhere and that's what kicks these things off. That's what a trigger is. And yes, you can have multiple types of triggers defined so that you can do things like uh, follow-up uh, questions to emails being answered or put a human in the loop and be able to use that as a mechanism to say when the human responds, how do you take it forward? These are the concepts of triggers. So the next thing that we want to talk about is going to be the concept of the planner. So the planner is the thing that is basically the large language model that's being used to figure out how to build a plan and how to be able to execute that plan based upon the information it has. And what you're going to find is this is where the large language model and the same way we do uh, dynamic or generative orchestration inside of Copilot Studio, it's the same engine that's basically the planner that's building the plan. So we still use generative orchestration. We're just doing it in an autonomous way to assess the tools versus having to do it where someone said something and that's the reason that we're building the plan. So just like in a synchronous agent or one that is a task-based agent that we talked about earlier, the difference here is going to be that we have this trigger that initiates Copilot Studio to basically go call out the generative orchestrator. The orchestrator is then going to use its uh, intelligence to be able to figure out Based upon the tool sets I have at my disposal, I need to create a plan to execute. And then what's going to happen is we're going to come back with a response and generate a response back. And then Copilot Studio is going to look at that again. Now, this can be a process that happens over and over again inside of an, inside of an autonomous agent because of the fact that you might be getting the response that's generated to be able to take it to complete the next step in the plan. Um, so just keep in mind that this process might happen numerous times. So let's look at what that might look like. So think of it that we could have multiple different steps that have to be executed within this and then through each step of the different plan that needs to be created, you might have it go through and reassess the result after each of the different steps. You might even have it that the data that was coming out is giving it different information to build a completely different plan. And so what you might see is through different runs of the uh, autonomous agent based upon the information that's being provided or some of the context that's being discovered as part of the process that they will actually adapt the process to use the tools in the most efficient way based upon the context of what's going on within the process and that is being assessed as the process is being run so this is not a pre-factored process that is just going to go through an if then this type of statement that's where the value of having a large language model as the engine and having copilot studio and an autonomous agent this is why this is so much more powerful than just typical business process automation which is just simply automating a business process because now we actually can use a large language model to think about this and think about how to do it so with autonomous agents, this is going to give us the ability to have that agility to be able to adapt as we're going and optimize a business process that can improve over time. We can also make it much more efficient and innovate with new processes so that we can go build different business processes that we want to automate, but then we can decide when is the right time to be able to use those different business processes to optimize uh, for efficiency. And it also gives us the ability to have scalability. That means that we can have a bunch of different business processes, a bunch of different knowledge components and all of these things and just give it a general instruction on how to do its job. And it makes it where it can do this at scale and let people be able to build these things out so that you will allow more and more of these to exist. And so this really opens up an opportunity for a massive innovation wave with the autonomous agent capability. And that partnered up with business process automation really opens some major new doors for us.
Well, I hope that video was really helpful for you to be able to get a better understanding of things. And if you want more videos like this for Copilot Studio, please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And as always, you can try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.